Hi everyone. My name is Jay Sable and I'm the Executive Director of the One Community 501c3 nonprofit organization. The purpose of our organization is to create open source tools, tutorials, resources, blueprints, and do-it-yourself instructions for self-sufficient, self-sustainable, and self-replicating teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities to be built around the world. One community will be the first of these villages and it will demonstrate the foundations of our open source and do-it-yourself plans which include sustainable food, sustainable housing, sustainable energy, open source and free shared education, highest good for-profit non-profit business models, uh, recreation and fulfilled living models, as well as true earth stewardship which we call highest good for all living. And what we're doing is we're putting all these things together because we believe that to truly comprehensively address the challenges of our generation generations to come, all of these things need to be addressed simultaneously. And so that's what we're doing, is putting them all together in one model, and we're designing it to create that teacher demonstration hub, to demonstrate so people can come and visit it, come and experience it, and then take everything necessary to duplicate the entire creation, either as individual components or as a complete teacher demonstration community village or city to be built anywhere in the world. And so this is our weekly progress update. As always, the uh, updates are the exact same format. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a bullet point list of everything that we've accomplished in the last week. And this is covering the week of December 30th, 2013 to January 5th, 2014. It's weekly progress update number 45. And uh, the theme of this update, I always have a theme that I like to talk about, which I'll talk about at the end, which is we create the world. You know, we are being the change that we wish to see in the world. Everybody in our organization is a volunteer, and uh, we're not waiting for somebody else to create it for us. We're creating it right now. Everything that we feel needs to happen, the complete sustainable civilization, foundational infrastructure that's necessary to establish teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities that can then teach others how to also establish teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities in a self-replicating pattern that could transform the world, just constantly working together as a global collaborative to address all of the challenges that we're facing right now and create the world that we know is possible. We believe that we create the world, and, uh, and we're doing something about it. We're doing everything we can to create it uh, positively and proactively, uh, moving in the direction that we think will benefit everybody. And we call ourselves the highest good for all organization because everything that we're doing is open source and free shared in such a way that people can take it and adapt it and do it the way that they want to. So if you're somebody who uh, sees something that we're doing and wants to get involved, join our team. If you're somebody that would like to consult with us or just contribute your uh, knowledge, join our team. If you're somebody that sees something you like but would like to take it in a completely different direction, Take this information and take it in a different direction. You are absolutely free to do that. And uh, that's what we're here to do is to produce project launch blueprints, free shared open source blueprints that are specifically designed to additionally launch new projects in different directions or in similar directions to ours so that people can take the information that we're doing and creating and use it in the way that works best for you. So let's jump into what we've accomplished in the last week. Uh, we finished our core curriculum cross-referencing into the curriculum pages. And what that means is we took the U.S. core standards, uh, California Department of Education standards, and the ACT-SAT uh, expectations for grade 7 and beyond, and we're cross-referencing that also with the award-winning Spectrum Test prep book series, and we've integrated all of that information into our curriculum. And so we've got a core curriculum page that outlines all that stuff, and we've, in the last week, we went and we double-checked to make sure that everything was covered in our curriculum pages. Uh, also, we have we are now 95% done with the social sciences image research. Um, we are on the relative space mind map is now complete, and so we're moving into building that on the website. And we let's see in highest good food, uh, we've added 40 more pages. Uh, sorry, 40 more pages, 40 more plants to the food forest page in the past week, as well as um, suitable location specifics. I'll talk about that when I wrap back around and talk in detail about all this stuff. Uh, we've integrated what we learned in 3D on the uh, large-scale Aquapini, which led to some more 3D changes. So we moved the pond down by 8 inches along with all the hardware with that. We added, we've added, started adding in the piping. We began adding in the food rafts. So you can start seeing a little bit more of the food production details within that structure. Very cool to see. 
Uh, we've created a SketchUp plant resource page and tutorial video. Great example of our open source goal to create project launch blueprints. Uh, that I'll talk about what that plant resource page and tutorial video is all about here in a second. Uh, we've started redesigning the Highest Good Food open source portal, which is only about 20% done. It's turning out to be a pretty big uh, deal, but the end result is going to be well worth it. Very awesome. And Tropical Atrium Hands, thanks to Devin Porter, are progressing again in 3D, which I'll talk about exactly what those are. Uh, Sago Center fourth floor bathrooms are done in 3D, added in the toilets, all the different things that we needed in there, urinal, toilet paper roll holder, mirror, all that kind of stuff in 3D. And we've done the first floor locker area in this last week. And also, uh, we welcome Tyler Gonson to our team, our newest pioneer, new member of the pioneer team, and he's gonna be working on the ACE application, which he's already started studying the code on that, to take that to the next level. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. So that's our update overview. Let me talk in depth about all these different things and what's happening, because this last week uh, is progress on some huge, huge action items. Starting with education, I mentioned that we did the core curriculum cross-referencing into the curriculum pages, which has been an ongoing process. So we started with the California, California Department of Education uh, standards for what needs to be taught for kindergarten through high school. And then once we've done that, we said, okay, well, we want people to be able to, you know, excel at the ACT, SATs, which are really a, a, a common uh, objective marker for education here in the United States. And so uh, then we looked at what were the ACT, SAT guidelines. After we did that, we then started looking at the U.S. Common Core standards, which are just, uh, were a little more comprehensive than the California Department of Education standards, and which were thorough but we wanted to add to that, make sure we didn't miss anything. And then on top of all that, we looked at, our, uh, the, at the Spectrum Test Prep Book Series, which you can, you can go to Amazon and see what that test prep book series is, but it goes into depth on the different lessons for all the different grades. And so by putting all these things together, we've identified what is really the foundational infrastructure of the Education for Life program. And then as we open source and continue to um, develop the, the, all the different elements of this and creating the lesson plans and the different, uh, the, uh, different uh, molecules, the different subject molecules. We want to make sure that we're covering everything, that we haven't missed anything. And then on top of that, we're designing the actual format of these so that we'll be able to add to them indefinitely. So if something new comes up and we say, hey, this should be incorporated into, <clears throat> into the subject molecules, then we can easily just add that into those as well. And somebody else could do the same thing. So as a open source content, the cross-referencing of all of this is then looking at all of our curriculum pages and saying, okay, let's make sure that everything that should be taught in all the different age categories, all the different grade categories, is completely referenced, that it's all represented in the curriculum breakout pages. And then we're, of course, going to make sure that they're also represented way more in depth in the subject pages. And so the cross-referencing of all of this, now if you go to any of the curriculum pages, you'll see that there's asterisks there for grades one through six and double asterisk for grades seven and beyond that says, hey, this is a core curriculum item that's, uh, that's been identified either through the U.S. core standards or the California Department of Education or the ACT, SAT. And so if you cover these things, then you're really covering the foundations. And so cross-referencing all that was a huge chunk of work and a lot of effort, uh, but totally worth it. And so if you take a look at the um, core standards page, then that will link the core standards page now is developed, and this added a lot more details to that page as well, has developed uh, with additional icons and links so that you can click on those icons and go to the different pages that where pieces of that core curriculum are represented within the curriculum. And then, of course, there's also an icon there and a link that will link you to the complete subject of social sciences or the complete subject of science or math. And we finished math, and so um, now we're working on social sciences. So... Which brings me to the second item here, is the social sciences image research is now 95% done. And here's some pictures of the Google Docs, right, that we're using to do this. And there's actually, we've done, just to give you an idea, this shows you how many pictures are on each page. We now have 60 pages of uh, images that are researched, bringing us 95%. This last 5% will probably add another Oh, I don't know, five five pages. I guess that's 10% of 60, but uh, it'll add probably another five pages. So maybe we're only 90% done. We got about another five pages of images to research, 
And then once we've got all that done, we're going to put all those together <clears throat> to create a social sciences uh, molecule that looks like the math molecule. And we call it a molecule just because it's got a circular shape to it. So, but the idea there is, is a nonlinear approach to teaching the complete comprehensive subject of social sciences. Everything from political science to geography to uh, foreign cultures to um, uh, uh, psychology, anthropology, all these different things will be represented in there all in one place that you can see the complete subject. And so all the research that we're doing is all those images are what will create that and then down below just like on the math molecule you have a description of every little component of that and then all the lesson plans tap back into that and teach all the details of how to do that. So and the research on that uh, we're really grateful we've actually had somebody helping us with this Elizabeth Throney uh, has helped us with this just doing some of the research along with our team and so um, yeah just thanks Elizabeth for your help I said I'd give a shout out and now I am I uh, really appreciate it. And anybody else who'd like to join our team is totally welcome to do that. we got lots of image research and things that uh, just take time to do, but they're actually pretty fun. They're just very time-consuming, and you'll uh, see your work grow and manifest with the One Community Open Source and Free Shared Education for Life program uh, as a template for global application and new paradigm education uh, that we think is really, really going to be something special. It's developing to be a pretty amazing program. So um, with the social sciences image, so the social sciences image research is done, and we also in the last week uh, finished the relative space um, mind map. And here you can see an image of what that looks like. You can see that what this is, so I talk about this each week, I like to just kind of remind people what the point of these mind maps are, is what you're looking at here is the dimensional relative space mind map, and what it is is teaching all subjects within the context of relative and dimensional space. And so if you look, each of the subjects there is represented by the arm on the, on the mind map where you've got art in, in order from right around to left, art, and then English down the bottom there, and then health, and now you can see math, science, social sciences, and then values. And each one of these images represents a different concept that's being taught within this. And the purpose of the mind map is to be a visual representation of how, of, of all the concepts within the lesson plan and to stimulate creativity. And then if you go to the website, and this is our next step now, is to develop out the web infrastructure that goes along with this, where each one of these subjects that you see on the mind map is represented there on, as, a, as a line of text that talks about how to teach each of these components within the context of relative and dimensional space. And the reason why we're doing this is to make it all relevant, to make it all, uh, to, to attach a why and hands-on um, activity to everything that we're learning. Instead of just learning out of a book, what if we made it where it constantly is applicable? Teaching kids the way that we as adults like to learn. Like Most adults don't want to just sit down and read a book to learn something. We learn a lot faster when we're hands-on and we've got somebody to teach us and we can really get our, get our hands dirty and do, do actually work with the material and apply the material, like on-the-job training, like internships, that kind of stuff. And so the whole Education for Life program is built around this concept and teaching everything within the concept context of different themes. And we're developing out, um, well, we'll develop an, an unending number of these, but we're starting with 30-something lesson plans. And anybody who'd like to participate in that, we're always looking for people to help out with that as well. So the dimensional space rel uh, relative, uh, sorry, dimensional slash relative space time uh, le relative space lesson plan is complete and now uh, we're going to start detailing out exactly what that mind map looks like on the website and all those details are done on a Google Doc and so now it's just a process of converting all that over and adding in the colors and all the icons and all the details that go on the website which will be done this week we'll finish all that this week so next week we'll be able to report to you and you'll be able to click in there and you know what we'll create a link uh, in the written blog. There's always a written blog that goes with this, so you can visit the written blog uh, to see, to, to click on the links to all this stuff. We'll add a link in there also to this, to that page, so that you can see it develop. And uh, like I said, it'll be done within the next seven days. So, yeah, that wraps up Highest Good Education. And Highest Good Food, uh, we added 40 more plants to the Food Forest page. So, here's a picture of that. And you can see that we're featuring bamboo in this picture. 
So a lot of people don't realize that, didn't you know there's bamboo? Most people, I think, think of bamboo as something that's grown in kind of a tropical type of region. But did you know there's bamboo that grows in Siberia? Our botanist is an expert on bamboo, and so we've chosen a whole bunch of bamboos that will grow in our climate zone, 7A, 7B climate zone. And so, um, yeah, here's an example of that. But we've added 40 more plants to the Food Forest page. That page continues to develop out. Um, now there's well over 150, I think there's probably about 200 plants on that page already. And uh, we've got, a, we've got oh, I think we've only got about, yeah, there's like 230 plants on that page, plus some of them are duplicated because they're in different sections. They're all divided up into the different sections of uh, the Food Forest page. And so we've only got about 70 more to do, although Michael said that he's got another 50 that uh, he realized would actually go well in that area. So we'll probably add those 50 to it too to make it just as comprehensive as it can possibly be. But um, very cool. And we added suitable location specifics to that. And what that means is um, if you look on the uh, on all the plants that we've added there, it says that these will all be grown in any suitable location. And so we've added uh, a link there that you can click on or just mouse over and it talks about what a suitable location is and why we haven't chosen that. Because once we get on the property, we'll open source the specifics of our botanists and our horticulturists and all the other experts like looking at this and saying, hey, this is why we're gonna plant this plant here. And then we'll watch how it does and we'll open source share like the maintenance and care of that plant as it develops as part of the food forest with time-lapse photography and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. And so, um, you know, until we get to the property though, we can't do that. You know, we need to actually choose the location based on you know, how much shade is here and what's the wind patterns here and what's the water flow going to be here and what else are we going to plant here? And so, you know, unlike the uh, planting details and location specifics for everything in the tr our tropical atrium and for everything that's grown in the aquapinis and the wallapinis, because those are indoor structures, they can be duplicated pretty much anywhere. The open source process of the food forest is going to be um, a very different process of open source and free sharing uh, how to create a food forest because we've got to really teach people the, the mentality and the expertise of a botanist and a horticulturist and the way that they look at things and why things are being put where they are and then track the progress and the development of those plants in those locations. And so, um, yeah, so we added those specifics onto the food forest page. Um, also, in Highest Good Food, uh, we integrated what we've learned in 3D. So last week or the week before last week, we made some changes in 3D that made us realize, hey, we can actually kind of change some structural aspects of the large-scale aquapini. We can move the pond down by eight inches. The reason why that's good is it makes it easier to look in there and see the fish, it makes it easier to harvest the lilies and stuff that are going to be grown on the top of that. It'll be easier to clean out, make the waterfall that's going to be in there uh, a much more enjoyable experience. And then it lowers down all of our media beds as well. So the media beds and everything are lowered down by eight inches. It lowered down the hardware with that. And so all that stuff was, was fixed or updated in the uh, SketchUp 3D model. And then we've also started adding in rafts. We started adding in the piping. And so it's like, okay, these are the pipes and we've adjusted all the water levels. And so the next step, we're just waiting uh, for Avery Ellis this week and Integrated Aquaponics. He's our, our primary consultant for all of the aquaponics and the aquapinis and all that stuff. He's gonna double check our work. We, you know, we've designed all this based on his recommendations. And so he's gonna double check our work, make sure that we didn't miss anything, make additional updates and we're really coming down the home stretch on what's inside. And hopefully within the next week, um, the engineering work that's being done behind the scenes by Zdenek and also by David Sweet uh, is working from an architectural perspective on getting all this stuff into CAD. We can start showing you some updates to the roof as well. And those could take a few more weeks, but uh, Zdenek said in this next week, we're probably gonna get, we should be able to get his preliminary uh, engineering designs for that roof, which is huge. Um, and a big part of what we wanna open source and free share is you know a permittable structure and then of course how to permit it how to get your licensing how to work with the county all your energy infrastructure all these details are things that we're open sourcing and so we're just developing these things out you know we create the world that's the theme of this uh of this vlog and uh you know the way that we're creating it is by by building it in great detail and taking the things that are being done around the world already and now thanks to the power of the internet we want to put that out there as open source and free shared content and do-it-yourself instruction manual format so that other people can duplicate it all. And so, um, yeah, things are coming along in 3D. Very, very cool. Uh, and then also <clears throat> relevant and related to the 3D is we created a SketchUp plant resource page and tutorial video. 
And what that is, is, well, A, we put it on our, uh, if you want to see the video, if you want to just see the video, go to our other YouTube channel, which is YouTube uh, Open Source Builders. And you can see that's where we're going to post uh, our open source stuff. We've got a couple videos up there, but this one's there as well. And then we're going to put it on the actual page. And so um, here's, a, here's what the page looks like. And, uh, and what this is, is it's a SketchUp plant resource where we looked at, we bot Michael, our botanist, went and looked at every SketchUp plant that we could find, over 500 different plants. He looked at them and he said, all right, how accurate does this look? You know, how usable is it? We're really looking for 3D plants because they look a lot better than the cutouts, which are super accurate because they're just pictures, but they don't have the same usability as far as models are concerned. And then he, then everything that he found, he used his decades of experience to say, well, what else could this be substituted for? Like, what could you get away with in a 3D model that has a similar look to this tree or to this plant, you know, so that we could expand what's possible? Because there's lots of people out there that are searching the SketchUp warehouse for interesting plants, and there's not, uh, there's no plant representation out there of what they're looking for. And so, unless they're experts on the plants and they're really clear on what it is they're looking for, you know, where do you find a plant that looks like that plant? And so, we created this page to be able to be a referenceable resource where people can search for the plant that they want. It's on there, you find the plant, and then you can download the model. You can click right there to go to the SketchUp warehouse and download the model that you want. And then we created this the YouTube video to be able to teach people how to use all of that information, like how to actually download the plant, like a complete, um, you know, simple guide to everything from downloading the plant to importing the plant into SketchUp and moving it, resizing it, all that kind of stuff is included in the in the tutorial video so a uh, really cool team effort to create that and um, exciting it's the very same tutorial that Michael will be using now as he starts to place these plants into the earth bag village as he starts to place these plants um, into the we also want to place them into the aquapinis and the wallapinis and we'll start really giving an example of what these structures are going to look like what's going to feel like to be inside of these structures and so um, it's very very cool and coming along um, also we started redesigning the highest good food open source portal and so uh, a couple weeks ago we finished the well let's see what was the last one we did I think we finished the Earthbag Village redesign portal and then we finished the highest good society uh, portals have been redesigned yeah the Earthbag Village uh, open source portal is completely done and redesigned the highest good society open source portal is completely redesigned and done so you can see what these look like when they're finished the education open source portal is completely redesigned and done and so now what we're working on is the highest good food open source portal and so we're about twenty percent done on that and when that's done it will link real easily with icons to all the different uh... food elements and then breakout pages for construction documents and everything and so we're just building out the infrastructure that will then be filled in by all of our open source content and then each page that we're building is designed to just keep plugging in more and more content and then eventually to add in the global co collaborative and the global cooperatives input as well as other people build teacher demonstration communities villages and cities to take their information and add it in there to create an even more comprehensive and in-depth database and so um, yeah it's uh, it's pretty cool it's uh, it's come along and I'm excited to, to see that developing as well in highest good housing um, we the tropical hands are progressing again thanks to Devin Porter which are from a 3d perspective by far the hardest 3d creation that we've had yet it is uh, it is a beast to be able to figure these out and what they are is in the tropical atrium there's two hands that are meant to be like this as you walk in you would walk in between the hands and the reason why we have hands in the tropical atrium is because uh, that environment's going to take a couple years. May, well, you know, to really develop, it could take five years, five, maybe even ten years for the trees and everything that are growing within the tropical atrium to develop to the point where it's got that wow effect. And so we needed two things. One, we needed terraces in the whole south wall or the south end of the tropical atrium so that we could maximize that growing space. Because if we just put up a wall right there, then it would cast a shadow into the entire structure. But by putting a 30 degree terrace in there, that allows us to plant that whole area. And then we realized, well, it's still going to take a long time for that to develop. And so what we want to do is we want to create something artistic 
that would really represent that those spaces and the hands became the best way to do that because we realized if we use hands we could create terraces on each one of the fingers that would then be grown on and then it would just have this really cool look when you walk in there when you come in from either end seeing this and so here's some pictures of what that looks like here they are developing in 3d and you can see a few different um, perspectives here on what this looks like now these are not positioned right and that's what's so difficult is building these in SketchUp is virtually impossible and so we've been trying to build them somewhere else and then import them and you got to import them and then move them around and see and yet we have all these different you know markers that we're trying to hit these specific measurements that you see here on where everything needs to be like where everything needs to line up so we get the right amount of space in the center and where it needs to line up with the top and you know what the different distances are and so we're trying to build these outside the model and then import them and then up make it adjustments and things like that and so and all of this is purposed so that we can grow all this amazing stuff and here is the planting plan to show you what that looks like like we've planned all this stuff out and if you want to see everything that we're planning to grow within this structure then go to the Tropical Atrium Planting and Harvesting page and you can see all that. All the open source details are there. This is ready with you know the purchasing details and the planting guidelines and everything you need, attracting pollinators. Everything that you need is already on this page. This page is complete. It is done until we start building it. And so um, this is a great example that you see here of what it is that of, of our open source process of creating open source blueprints that people can use and do-it-yourself instruction manuals this is it and then once we start growing all this we'll actually create two more layers of pages that are going to be added on to the one that you see to to the tropical atrium planting and harvesting page that will then be additional details for every plant that's in there how including everything from um, you know different household uses to uh, recipes and other uh, historical information and things like that that uh, that you know experts like Michael and Bear on our team can provide and so um, yeah it's pretty cool to see the hands coming together and uh, once those are done once the hands are complete then the reason why it's so important to get them right is because once we've got them complete then we need to look at what the piping is going to be behind these because we're going to recycle the water the hot water shower water from the adjacent showers in the earth bag village and we're going to recycle that water into these hands and it will circulate and move around in those hands and then we'll capture that heat and then also we're going to use some of that gray water underground for watering the uh, watering the different trees or at least that's the plan right now and so we need to get the hands right so we know exactly how much space we have so we can start planning out what that plumbing looks like and start making some decisions on these kinds of things which are important because we got to price all this stuff out and you know it's just all part of the process and so um, coming along great work Devin Porter on that really really amazing stuff uh, so also in, let's see, and then uh, in other structure news, uh, Sego Center, the duplicable city hub, is progressing now, and here's some pictures of what we've done there, and specifically we've worked on the fourth floor, um, which is there's the cupola up there, and don't be confused by these pictures, like the floor is translucent, and we left it that way because it was more interesting than just doing a, a solid floor, so you kind of see through, you're actually looking through the fourth floor down in the third floor, but this is the bathrooms that have been developed and designed up there, and you can see down below what's underneath it. But uh, that fourth floor is the cupola. It's going to be a, a recreation center, a multimedia center. It could be for holding classes, whatever you want, up there. And um, these bathrooms then service that fourth floor. And so we've designed those, and you can see all the details here that's been put into that. You know, the toilet, the urinal, the sink, uh, toilet paper holder, the, uh, the uh, toilet cover dispenser all those details have been added in and then also uh, in the Sego Center we have uh, added in the uh, the ground floor which you can see here this is the ground floor locker area and that locker area services the natural pool so we're open source sharing a natural pool design to teach people how to build their own natural design so they don't have to use chemicals and stuff and so uh, that area naturally there'll be a little locker area for visitors to be able to put their stuff whatever it is that they want to put in there when they jump into the pool and so uh, this little locker area has been added in there and then next week what we're going to do is we'll add in the doors to the left and the right there need to be added in we've got some more details that need to be done on that top floor I and mean, we're putting in some of the last last little details here touch up details on this which we hope to wrap up I'd love to wrap up 3d you know the the bulk of 3d within the next couple weeks 
So we'll see if we can do that. And then um, yeah, Carl Harris, uh, behind the scenes, has finished up all the details. Like we still had some touch-up details that needed to be done on the first floor CAD update. And so now we're working on the second floor CAD update. And as soon as all of that's done, then we will um, update the uh, the main, the CAD that you can link to on the website. Like right now, if you click on the CAD, it's the old export. So we're just doing all these details, making the CAD look like 3D. And once all that is in place, then we can update the CAD on the website and we're ready to go into the next level of engineering. And so um, all that stuff, next couple of weeks, that's what we're doing to wrap it up. So um, I said the theme was we create the world and uh, this is how we're doing it. You know, our goal is positive and permanent transformation for the highest good of all, all life, all people on this planet, uh, to create a world that truly, truly is sustainable and works for everybody. We call ourselves the highest good for all organization, and this is, this is how we're working to create that. And so if you're somebody that would like to help us, um, we're always looking for people to join our team, to get involved with what it is that we're doing. And uh, there's lots of ways to do that. You can join our team as either a partner. You can join our team as a member, either a pioneer member, the people that are going to move on to the property, or as a satellite member, which are the people that aren't going to move on to the property, that are either going to build a community somewhere else, or just but want to be a part of everything that we're doing behind the scenes. Um, you can join us it's just by, by joining us on our different social media networks and sharing what it is that we do. We have, we're in every social media network. You can join us through our fan page, our Facebook fan page. We have a Facebook updates page. We have a Facebook discussion group. We have a Twitter feed. We have a Pinterest account. We have a Tumblr account. You can subscribe here to this, this YouTube channel. We actually have a couple of them. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Or if you want regular updates, um, click on our, uh, send us an email. If you'd like to receive a weekly update every time we do this blog, we send out an email to anybody who wants just a quick email that says, hey, the weekly update is done. If you want to check it out, here's the link to the written blog and the video. Um, send us an email to onecommunityupdates at gmail.com and uh, we'll put you on that list and you'll just get an email from us once a week. We don't spam or anything, so uh, you, know, you get one email from us and it's just our update email. So, and then of course, if you, the one thing that can help us most if, uh, if you really want to help us most, is we are still looking for major funding to, uh, to get the property off the market, to remove that property from the market so we can disclose the location, so we can share all the details of that and take this concept of we create the world to a whole new level by creating the first teacher demonstration community uh, that people can, billet, to, can visit. And you know that will bring together a team of 50 people to live on that property initial team to build the first infrastructure that will then allow us to grow to a team of 100 people to build the next set of infrastructure that will allow us to grow to a team of 150 people and so on and so forth building ultimately to a city of 2,000 people working together as nonprofit volunteers for the highest good of all open source sharing free sharing everything that we do sharing every component every element of everything that we create to help others to duplicate everything that we do and addressing, simultaneously addressing all of the challenges of our generation for generations to come at one time in a way that people can come and experience, they can come and visit it, they can participate, they can get hands-on training in doing it as we're building everything and then working as that global mecca, as that central hub for uh, sharing information, free sharing that information with, uh, with the world so that people can access it and use it in a way that they want to. And so if you'd like to help us out, uh, if you know anybody, share our funding page with anybody that you know that might be able to help us, help us out with that. We'd be very grateful. And um, yeah, with that, I will say thank you until next week. This wraps up uh, weekly update number 45. Happy New Year. 2014 is going to be a good one. And we will keep on keeping on until next week. Uh, say thanks for all the emails and all the uh, all the great all the great support that we get, and um, all of the suggestions and everything are also appreciated. And uh, yeah, have yourself a good week. Thank you.